You're listening to the Hello Well with Danielle show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and travel related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle Washington. If you don't know who I am, I am a Reiki master. I am a person who does guided meditations. I am someone who loves just helping other women of color take time to breathe and heal and really creating this wellness revolution. So we know that we matter and we take care of ourselves. Um, I am super, I say this all the time, but you know, this is one of those days where we're in the midst of Black History Month. This is the second week in Black History Month. And last week we talked about music and how music is medicine. And this week is all about dancing. Again, I said it before, music is my first love, but dancing is my mistress. And I hella love my mistress. She is so bomb. Sometimes when I just dance, it, it, it I feel like I'm being trans into some spiritual trance and it just moves me. And that's when I get downloads and I just lose myself. I think that's one of the things I miss the most about COVID is being in a space where you can just freely move. And so, and the music just, you know, dancing is just a way to really express yourself. And that's the point where I love that there's even this thing called dance therapy. That's literally about utilizing dance as a form of of therapy, getting your unconscious thoughts out. And if you look at people like who do like lyrical dancing and dancing to the lyrics of songs, um, or just move their body to the feelings of whatever the emotions they're feeling, you know, it's just beautiful. And it is a great way that again, our people have been using dance in so many different ways as a way to heal. And my guest today, Dr. Renez Toussaint Kinshiro, I'm probably botching her last name, so I apologize is a doctor of chiropractor and mental wellness coach, but she is so much more than that. You know, what I love about her is that, you know, she spent, she's a fellow traveler. So you'll hear some travel stuff on today's episode. Um, But she spent three years in Central America away from everyone she loved, you know, like me. And that's something so much of what I did, but what for her and, and for me, that opened the door to her self-love and her healing. And that's actually where she began using dance for her mental health. Um, and she created, you know, dance for mental health, which encourages women who are suffering in silence, to discover their identity, their voice and take back their power. And she understands the connection of physical and mental body and why they should not be looked at separately, which again, goes back to that whole thing of dance therapy. And so I can't wait for this episode. You're also going to hear a little bit more about us creating this dance challenge more details to come because it was like, oh, let's do this. And I'm like, oh, wait, this is this week. Let's, let's, let's figure out how we're going to do this. But we are going to be doing a dance challenge where every day for like five minutes, we're going to encourage you to just move your body, move your body. Dancing is so healing, you know? And again, you know, I look at my childhood and I think of like the WAP and the Cabbage Patch, and then you move forward to, you know, the Nay Nay. And then of course we have Electric Slide and Cupid Shuffle. Ain't no one ever been mad when doing the Cupid Shuffle. So think about that. If you ever question dancing being a form of healing, ain't no one ever mad doing the Cupid Shuffle. I've never seen someone stomping up, angry, face, upset, in tears, crying, doing the Cupid Shuffle. No, we're happy. Dancing is a way to lift your moods. And it's a great way to reduce stress. You know, it's great for self-esteem. It's great for focus. It's great for self-awareness. It's great for reducing anxiety. Dance is amazing. So sit back, relax, dance while you're listening to this and enjoy the episode. Love you. Thank you, Dr. Renez, for joining me on the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me. I am wonderful. I love it. Oh my God. I have been, ever since like I knew, found out that you were doing like dance and using as a form of therapy and healing. I wanted you on the show. So I, you know, I, I'm just thrilled that you're here because dancing is my everything. I always tell people music is my first love dancing with my mistress, but honey, I love my mistress. <laughs> That's a very good mistress to have. <laughs> yes, she is. Sure. She has. So how did you even get into like, 
you know, let me backtrack the story. Like I feel like as a culture, and especially this being Black History Month, dancing has just been a part of our culture. It's been even when we don't know it unconsciously, our ancestors have been using dance as a form of healing for so many years. How did you get into actually really organizing to where you're using dance as a form of therapy? Well, it started on my own personal journey and dancing, like you said, dancing is maybe not my mistress, it's my main. <laughs> and I always loved dancing, but it wasn't until that I found myself in a really dark place that I, it was just natural. I turned on the music and I started dancing. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> you know? When we were, we were younger, we went out, we partied, we had a good time. It felt good for the moment. But turning on the music at home, um, in my own private space and dancing and it feels good. I said, I am. This is something, this something, there is something about dancing that we don't talk about this. And it was yeah. so therapeutic for me. Um, so that, that's what, that's what, that's how it started because I used it on myself. And I was like, I have to share this. I love it. Now, what kind of different dances do you do? Like what, like, what backgrounds? I don't have a dance background. I don't have a professional dance background. So you've like, but you've all. taken classes at all or no? At all. I love I'm, it. I'm a free spirit dancer. Even in my classes, I tell people, don't try to, you don't have to um, keep up with me. You don't have to do every single dance. Just move your body. Like dancing is, is is a form of expression, right? How we express ourselves. So the most important thing is that you feel it and you just let your body go, let your body be free and move. I cannot, I tell everybody, I cannot do an eight count dance choreography to save my <laughs> life. Okay? I have tried taking dance classes before and it's just, it's just not me. Um, it may work for somebody else, but for me, I like, high energy music and that's what that's what moves me <laughs> yes i love it so i am the girl who loves the eight cl- eight count classes i have taken so i really felt well i've always loved dance and it's funny like when i was a child my I, parents basically made a choice either you stick with these dance classes you started taking randomly or you stick with soccer you're too busy. We can't have you do both. And so I had to choose and I really love dance, but I was in middle school by this time and I was in a, you know, a proper dance school and everyone was really young compared to me. And though I still got the lead, I'm going to dust my shoulders off on that lead moment. But um, it was like, do I really want to be with kids that are younger than me for a really long time? When do I really want to give up soccer? And I played soccer for 13 years. So long story short, I chose soccer, but I regretted it until I found and discovered salsa. And I discovered salsa in the most craziest things. I was living in D.C. at the time Mm -hmm. and my cousin was coming to visit me. And we went to, you know, we went to Adams Morgan, went to this club and they were playing salsa music. I'm like, cool, great music. You know, we love music. Love, you know, good food, good drinks. And so some guy asked us to dance and I was just like some older guy, mm-hmm. well, you know, older guy that was a little bit on the large side. And I'm like, oh, Lord, this is not going to be good. I'm like, I don't dance. I don't know salsa. He's like, don't worry. Just follow me. You'll be fine. And I'm like, he takes us on the dance floor one by one. And I'm like, I'm doing all these moves. And I'm like, you would think I was like some J-Lo or someone. I don't know who I can think of. I don't know why I thought J-Lo, but whatever. Um, And that's what started my love. And so it kind of went from there to learning about Cuban salsa, which is where I started wanting to actually even go to Cuba. And then went from there to Roomba to Samba, a little bit of Samba. I'm horrible at Samba. Then to Afro-Brazilian to Vogue dancing, belly dancing, uh, and then to tango. Oh, tango is the tango. I get lost in tango. And then also I did like, what was it? Uh, Congolese dancing as well. Yeah. Um, so would you like to come over and teach a class for me? <laughs> oh my God. I, <laughs> I don't know if I can I'm teach anything. <laughs> okay, I'm going to throw that out there. But a few things. Um, I love that you mentioned that dancing was an option for you. 
I'm from the Caribbean, and when we migrated to the U.S., it was education or nothing. Yeah. I did play sports, but it was just, the idea was playing sports to get into college. I would never think in a million years, I got a bachelor's degree, I went on and got a doctorate degree, that I will turn around and dance and be my passion right now. Like, it's it's crazy to me, but I didn't have that option to like, hey, join, you know, a dance class, uh, join a dance program to yeah. learn a particular dance. I didn't have that option. But I did, I love the salsa. I did do some salsa when I lived in Miami. I lived in Peru, so I took some classes there. I forgot about that. And when I went to Ghana, I spent three months in Ghana, I think that's that's what um, brought back that love, that true love of dancing to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you make a good point that, you know, a lot of people didn't have, especially in the black and brown communities, mm-hmm. the option to take dance classes. You know, they weren't always readily made available. And, you know, and unfortunately, the arts is one of the first things to go when you're looking at budget cuts. Yeah. So I was grateful to have that experience, even though short lived. But, you know, if you think about it, and that's one reason why I wanted this, we've been using dance as a form of healing and joy for years. Like you hear that Cupid shuffle and we all run to the, like, we all know what's up and you're happy. Ain't no one is, here's a song, be like, oh, I, like my life is horrible. Life is ending. I heard the Cupid shuffle. It is over. No, it's like some, there's this Dave Chappelle I love Dave Chappelle. Like I love love Dave Chappelle. So I don't know if you saw the episode he does with John Mayer. Okay. So he does this episode with John Mayer and he talks about how different people move to music. And he's like, he he was doing this experiment. He's like, he's like, you know, there's this phenomena that white people, when they hear electric guitar, they just lose their shit. And then, you know, Latin people are, I think it was the piano organ and something else. And then he's like, black people, it's the drums. And I'm just like, and he goes into different places and you just see them like all of a sudden, like losing their shit on the certain music that they're, that he was talking about. But like he has the electric guitar playing in a, like a black barber shop. And they're like, can you turn that shit down? But then when they played the drums, they have the guy from Roots, Questlove from the Roots. And they're like, yes, that's my song. And I'm like, and me watching this, I'm like, when the beat, the drums start hitting, I'm like, that is it. And I, and I honestly believe that that's ancestral. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, like I said, when I went to Ghana, just being around that music, now that's basically all I listen to, right? <laughs> Afrobeat. Yeah. I'm going to lie. Um, my family always makes this joke that I could hear a beat, just drums, and I'll, I'll be moving. I was like, yes. Um, that's one of the things I believe that we we brought over that stayed with us with the music um and music and dance is universal like you said like when you're dancing who could be mad when you're dancing yeah right um it brings us joy so i really do believe back in the day our ancestors they were using that as a form of their own healing to get through the difficult times so yeah. And you know, we did it during slavery times too. I mean, like a lot of times you look at, you know, places that were colonized, even in the Caribbean as well, they use dance as a form of message. They use dance as a form of kind of rebellion to kind of keep their culture and they did it in secret. And so it has been something that we have used, but it's also something that's been used against us to be like, we want to strip you from your ancestry, your 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 who you are. We're gonna take this dance thing from you because we know how important it is for you. And that's why I really want people to kind of go back into that living of the ancestral way of using dance as a form of healing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for example, carnival. Everyone is uh, they're familiar with carnival in the Caribbean. Like this yeah. year, would, well, last year and this year would be the first time Trinidad, who had the biggest carnival in the entire mm-hmm. world, they're not having carnival this year. So a lot of people are suffering. A lot of people, they're in sorrow about it. Um, if you don't understand the, the culture, you might, you might think, oh, what's the big deal? It's just a party. But no, it's 
been going on for years. It is a tradition. People look forward to what's that time. It's, it's more than just putting on a costume and looking cute, you know, and shaking your behind. It's part <laughs> of our, our healing. It's part of what we need. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, it's really been tough just seeing everyone talking about, um, that seeing and hearing everyone talking about not having that experience this year. Like, what, what can we do? You know? Yeah. And, you know, it, it sucks because for me, when I'm stressed out or something's going on in my life and I'm just upset, I will literally take a dance break. And it may be five minutes, maybe 10 minutes, maybe longer, but I will literally take a dance break. So for me, when I'm dancing and, and I'm fine dancing in front of other people, I think I'm a little bit more still self-conscious and that's why I'm like, oh, I got to get these eight counts down properly. <laughs> but when I'm by myself, I just let it go, let it flow. And I get into a spiritual trance. It almost feels like I'm in church because it, the, the healing and it could be any type of music. It could be gospel. It could be hip hop. It could be Italian music. It could be just anything that just kind of puts me in a zone, which changes my mind. And like, so one of my questions is for you is why is, I mean, I don't know if, you know, from the scientific moment, like how, why does dance work for us? Well, dance, I like to say it's not really specific just to dancing, even though I feel that dancing is my exercise of choice. But when we move, there are feel good hormones that releases. And when we do any type of movement, but who wants to run and who wants to do burpees? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. <laughs> who wants to run? Not mine. I mean, not saying we shouldn't. We should, but there's we 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 are creating more of that feel good hormones when we move our body, and then. It's reducing the stress producing hormones. So what that causes us to do is increase our self confidence, our self esteem. It stimulates our brain and also it decreases um, anxiety and depression. Because when you're dancing, you're in the moment. The thing that causes a lot of anxiety because we're worried about everything that's going on. We worry about what we're going to do tomorrow. We worry about the future. But when you're dancing and I like to think of having an intention when you dance. That would make a point. huge, a huge difference, right? Have an intention when you dance. So you, you know, you like, what is your goal for, for dancing? Um, another thing is I like to, with my, with my classes, I like to also focus in on breathing because breathing helps us also to stay centered and stay in the moment. Even when we're exercising, we're supposed to breathe. Let's do that. (laughs) So just breathing and staying in the moment, it just helps our mental space tremendously. I love it. And so you talk of, can you talk a little bit about the classes that you offer and kind of how they're different? So I love the fact that it's not structured because I think that's one thing that stops people from taking a dance class of like, oh, you know, I don't want to do something that's structured and I don't think I'm going to get the counts right. And so talk about what you do and how it benefits your your clients. Yes. I, so I get that all the time. Like People see my videos like, oh my God, I wish I could dance like you. Like you don't have to dance like me, right? Everybody could dance. Our body, our bodies are made to move, right? We're supposed to move our body. That's what it's made to do. So in the classes, I like to start, what do you want to get out of being here today, right? What What is your focus? What are you worried about? Um, what goals do you want to achieve? And then we go through breathing and just being in the moment and getting centered and just play the music and we literally just dance. Like the energy. I did one. It's so funny because I did my first live class before the pandemic hit. And it was like electrifying, just being in a room with a group of women. It was amazing. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, oh, and being part of <laughs> and being part of our P2P program, um, the Clarity Coach, the Jatia Jones, I'll never forget. She was the one who encouraged me like, hey, everyone is home. Everyone is losing their, their minds. You should maybe think about, you know, bringing your class online. And I was against it. I was like, it's not the same. You 
know, I want to be in the same room. Like I'm a touchy person. I like to give hugs, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> and touch is the form of feeling, right? So, um, so I did it. I, I took the chance. I was like, you know what? I'm going to throw it up online. And I did. And the energy was just the same. <laughs> it's on Zoom. So just seeing everyone move and it just gave me the energy to continue. And it, it, it's a beautiful experience. And that's one of the things that, you know, good old COVID changing the world one dance move at a time. That was one of the things I was thinking I was thinking I would miss the most about my travel because what I do when I travel is I love dancing. I love going to clubs. I love, you know, if I'm learning some, you know, local dance, like when I was in Bali, Bali, it was in Bali. In Bali, I learned, you know, you know, traditional Balinese dancing. When I was in Cuba, you know, of course we did salsa. Um, and in different places, you know, I always go and try to take dance classes one way or another or learn something. But I love clubbing. And the one thing I love about being in a club or going to listen to live music where you're still dancing is that energy. And, you know, and I feel like there's something collective about the energy that helps kind of puts you in a better mood and it helps reduce stress in so many different things. And so that's one thing I hate. Well, there's one thing, one of many things why I can't stand COVID. Yes, dislike is a strong word, but (laughs) um, dislike. Yeah, so when I I, I lived in, in Peru, also, like you said, when you travel, you go to clubs, and that also helps you connect with the culture, right? Yeah. The locals love to see us foreigners, you know, dance into the music, and it, it's a beautiful experience. Yeah, it truly is. So I know you talked about, you know, it can help with anxiety, a couple of different things. What are the benefits of dancing, using dance as a form of healing? What's the, the benefit of using dance as a, as a healing is you, it's available to you at any time, anywhere. Facts. <laughs> You don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to make an appointment. You literally turn on the music in your own space and you move, right? You just allow your body to do what it's supposed to do. And it really does help your um, your confidence. So I did a five-day challenge of getting up every morning, writing down something that you want to get done for the day, and just dance for five minutes. The five-day challenge okay. is for five minutes in the morning. And the feedback I got was, like, amazing. Like, I had a nurse who, she was suffering from high anxiety. That was the middle of COVID. And she was like, this is so good. She actually took it to her office <laughs> and had her staff dancing every morning before they get their day um, started. It gives you energy. That, that's one of the things that um, I needed the most. Because I had symptoms of anxiety and depression, and sometimes your energy is just low. And when you dance, it just builds that energy back up, and I, and I just love it. I love that. And I know that, you know, even using dance for, I know that, you know, studies have been shown and, you, and dance has been used to help people who have emotional trauma. Like, I don't know if you know any more information about that or not. Specifically for emotional trauma? So like, I know that like studies have shown like the healing power of dance and how it has helped people who have had grief, loss, or some form of trauma to be able to use their body to tell the story and work through it. And I just feel like that's such a beautiful way when, you know, when people are dealing with the most trauma, like, yes, you have your normal typical therapy in which I'm not saying not to do that as well. But like if dance, especially for people, the black and brown community is so innate in you, and that might be a way to really help you through such a traumatic moment like that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Like earlier I said, dancing is an expression of self. So well, not everyone is verbal. Not everyone wants to speak about their trauma. Some people write about it, for example. Yeah. So, so there you go with dance, movement, and only in your healing, remember, it's just for you, right? You're not putting on a performance. You're not dancing for anybody else. It's for you. So once you move, you know the story. You feel the, You feel all the emotions. So... Yeah, I, I I truly believe that is um, 
amazing way to cope with emotional trauma. It's, it's one way because with our society and when we talk about mental health and things like that, we always think it's just one way. I need to go talk to the therapist. And a lot of people, and I'm an advocate for therapy yet, I still have a therapist, right? But people, um, once they think that, oh, therapy is the only way, some people are kind of resistant to that, right? Maybe they had a bad experience or maybe they don't believe in going to therapy. But you don't, I, I truly believe you don't need a diagnosis to know that something is off, right? And yeah. we, we don't need the diagnosis. So once you feel it in your body, you you know what's going on in your life. Once you're honest, if he's being honest with yourself, right? And you know, you, you're honest and you know that something is not right, then venture out. See what's out there. There's so many different types of feelings. Not only dancing, riding, um, Reiki, yoga, meditation, there's so many different types of healing. So I want people to just be open to different types and just do what works for you, right? It's just not just not one way to healing for everybody. It's not one size fits all. Yeah, and I love that. And also the fact is there's also not one size and one type of dancing that fits all. Like there are so many different types of dancing, like I was talking earlier, that for me... I just found healing through different types of dancing. And one of the dancing, like dancing types that really helped me the most was Vogue dancing, which, you know, definitely rooted in our communities. And it was, it was just a freedom of expression. And at first I felt so silly. I'm like, oh, I don't think I have this. I don't think I look cute. Like, I don't know if I can do really some of these things. And then I had the most amazing, amazing teacher here in San Francisco um, who, you know, just had a way of teaching it that when I would take these classes, I just felt free and I felt empowered. Like I it was, all, and it literally was my church. I would go every Monday and it would be my time to express that I am powerful. I am wanted. I am loved. I am in a safe community. And that's, and I just love bow dancing. Yes. All those affirmations. And we could push that those affirmations through a movement, say it with our body. <laughs> it is so beautiful. And one thing I love with so much of what you're doing, and I don't know if you call what you're doing ecstatic dancing, but like, where was I? So I'm going to Burning Man, I'm a burner. People don't always know that about me, but I'm a burner. I go to Burning Man and I love it. And I miss Burning Man as well. But, you know, going to Burning Man or, you know, when I was in Bali, I did this ecstatic dance. And ecstatic dance, the way I would describe it, is just people like playing music and they're just freely moving. And I remember the first time going and doing this and I was like, and I was hella judgy on my going to front. I was like judging to the fullest. I was just like watching people because, you know, I was probably one of the very few, I can count on my hand, people of color that were in the room. And there are a lot of wonderful people there. And I'm not saying they're wrong. But I was just like, oh, my God, you're not on beat, sis. Like, oh, like, what are you doing? Like, where is this movement coming from? Like, how are you getting that with that beat and that, you know, whatever? And once I was I was there for a second, I'm like, why are you judging? Because one thing I could say, everyone looked happy. Mm. Everyone looked just joyful. Except for me, because I was in my judgment space until I was like, oh, hey, let's stop judging and join the group. And I just zoned. And it was just, I found myself moving in very tribal ways that I don't think I had moved before. And I was just like, it just got me into the zone. And like, I love that free form dancing. And again, I love that you just do it on your own and it doesn't cost a thing. It's so funny you mentioned that because when you were judging others, you were holding yourself back. And yeah. When you said, hey, you know, they're having fun, then you set yourself free, right? So, yes, I just like the freedom, the just free-flowing dancing, right? Um, because sometimes the struck is not for like you said it's not for everybody right some people may prefer a more structured yeah. structured dance but for me what works for me and I'm not trying to get away from what works for me to please other people right it's just 
big need and just let the music um, move you. So what kind of music moves you? Like what are your what are your sometimes go to songs like this is this is when I'm gonna rock out and just have a good old dance party? I'm Caribbean, so first and foremost, I love music reggae. Bob Marley is my artist. <laughs> yes. My favorite artist. So his birthday's coming up this week, so is mine. Yeah, so rest in peace. I love Bar Marley, reggae. Soca music is my energy music for life, Afrobeats. And then, you know, I love the good old hip hop and the good old R and B. <laughs> you gotta switch the mood up, right? <laughs> yeah, <Yo>, definitely. <laughs> so sometimes you wanna just sing your long sing to the <laughs> sing your long out or, you know, be calm and probably do some meditation music or something like that. But I love it. So one of the questions I want to ask you is, um, I know that you have some dance classes coming up soon. Like, how can people find out about the classes? How can they follow you as well? Okay, so you guys can follow me on Instagram. I'm more active on Instagram at dr. Dr. Renez. So dr. dot r e n n e s. I'll be having monthly classes. Um, you guys can find out about it on on. Instagram and also have a membership coming up later in the year to not only it's going to be a dance membership program, but we focus in on going deeper and how we feel, how to deal with your negative emotions and use dance as a way of releasing those negative emotions. And that's so important because right now, I mean, like we're in a new year and I get that, you know, most of us are like, okay. We left everything negative in 2020, but life is still, there's always ups and downs. And dancing is just a free method for many of us to just change our our mindset in a short moment. It's a way to reduce stress, anxiety, you know, to focus and be in the moment, be in the present. Oftentimes we're so busy on that hamster wheel of life, going, going, going in our thought process that we're thinking about the future, we're thinking about the past, we're thinking about all these different things. But the moment that we're in right this second in dance, as Dr. Renes said, puts us in that space. So I love, love, love what you're doing. And I'm so grateful. And girl, I just believe you will see me there in my little outfit. Because of course, I always feel like you have the cute little, I feel like you don't know why. And even though I do dance on my own, I just feel like when you're dancing, you just need to have an outfit. It helps kind of boost the mood. Um, yeah, of course, like just dressing up always <laughs> helps your mood. So, yes, I'll be looking forward to you joining me. It'll be fun. And still, you have um, you, you have to take me up on my offer to teach one of your special Teach one of the classes. <laughs> it's funny. Like, I know. So when I used to go to gyms, I didn't really, I would like walk past all the like the the tools, I don't know what they're called, like the machines and stuff, because I'm like, I'm not a machine girl. I mean, like it can be because I ran track and so you were forced to do all this stuff. But I would run towards, beeline towards the classes. I'm like, okay, what kind of classes? We got a Zumba class. We got a hip hop class. I'm like, hip hop and I were not besties. I'm like, that shit hard. Okay, I don't know what people who take hip I, I give props to people who take hip hop classes because I find those to be so freaking hard. And like, the steps are just a little bit too intricate for me. I almost never have hip hop songs in my class. <laughs> so yeah. I understand. Yeah, it, it didn't work, but I, I just, I there's something about taking a dance class. And so maybe I might take you up on this. Well, what I think I'm going to take you up on is uh, doing a, a, a dance challenge, like having someone do, like having everyone. And we're just doing this right now. If you're listening, I'm just going to, I'm just, just going to do it right Let's now. Do it. Let's do it. Starting tomorrow, we are going to do a five day dance challenge. I'm going to, so make sure that you're following us on Instagram. Hello, well with Danielle. Um, it is that is right. I think about that. Uh, and we're going to do a dance break. We're going to do a dance break every single day. I don't know what time. So just, I'll give you the information on Monday, but we're going to do a dance break. Um, and we're going to party and we're going to celebrate and we're going to bring in joy every single day because you know life is short and it's time to live in the moment and the best way to live in the moment is to be dancing yes and 
celebrate you, celebrate every single day, gratitude, all those things I, I include in my dancing, right? Gra- especially gratitude. Yeah. I, I, I wake up every morning and I dance. I wake up every morning. I listen to a certain song that's like kind of my meditation song. It's like, it's actually Lundrell who one day I will have on this podcast because I love him. But like, so he does a song or it's a song or meditation. I don't know how to really explain what it is, but it's beautiful. It's called Gratitude. So I listen to that and then I go into the layabouts and then a song called Bring Me Joy. Honey, when that song comes on, don't get it twisted. I move out the way because I'm about to move my body. That and a couple other songs. There's a couple of, of hip hop songs that I'm like, oh, I've just lost everything. I remember being at a, con- a conference one day and the song came on that I just danced. I think it was like back that thing up. I don't know why. That's that's okay. my song. <laughs> and it came on and I just kind of lost it because I am known to drop it like it's hot at any point. And I'm like, oh. All I know is I did it and I turn around and I see my business coach looking at me like, girl, you done lost your mind. I was like, sorry, you shouldn't play certain songs and think what that I'm it? not going to move. I'm just sorry, not sorry. Money to in 2000. Yes, that sounds It just so happens. I'm like, I certainly, like my friends know if certain songs come on, especially like too short and like, oh God, I'm from, from California. It's a wrap. You can't even you, you can't even help it. Your body head just just goes. <laughs> yeah, that memory, I can't help muscle it. memory when those songs come on. So yeah, so we will be doing either a five day or seven day. I'm gonna figure this out. We're gonna do a five or day, seven day dance challenge because I want you guys moving and knowing that this is a easy and free form of therapy and healing that is available to you right the second at any second at any hour at any country. At any point in time in your life. Yes, yes, absolutely. I hope you guys join us. Make sure before you dance, you want to have an intention behind for the day. What do you want to do for the day? Or have a power statement like I'm confident. Today I am confident. Today I am I am bold, right? Whatever it has, some type of intention or a power statement for the day and just turn on the music and get to it. We're looking for it. Mm-hmm. Make sure you guys let us know your, um, give us some reviews at the end. Give, share your wins at the end of the week, how you feel. And yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, thanks for coming out this. there. <laughs> I love this. So we'll make sure that we have you on here dancing um, as well. So we we'll make sure that we're going to coordinate this. Uh, I'm super excited about this. And so at the end of every show, I always ask people a quick fire question. So whatever comes to mind, just whatever answer, whatever it is. Okay. So you're, you're ready? Ready. Okay. So the first question is, what does living hella well mean to you? Oh, just um, knowing who I am and being true to myself. That's wellness for me. Yeah. Living hella well. Like, yeah, I'll stick to that. I'll stick to that. <laughs> I love it. Aisle or window? Oh, always. Well, I can't say always. I used to be always window, but, you know, my bladder got pretty bad. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> so Is that an age thing? Because I'm really confused. I didn't used to have that problem. And now it's like since worse. I used to always like no aisles, but now if I'm flying more than five hours, I'm definitely taking the aisle seat. Love that. Plus, you seem tall, so I would think that would help you. Yes, I'm 5'9". Yeah, to yeah. dream. <laughs> I'm still eating ice cream, hoping one day. What is always in your travel bag? Oh, that's an important thing to have. Yeah, my phone. (laughs) At least I always say if I have my phone and my wallet, everything else is replaceable. (laughs) And my glasses. I need my glasses on my contacts. I need to see. No, those are all very important things because I have lost my phone or let me phrase it. I've had my phone stolen on a trip. And that is one of the hardest experiences to have because you're like, oh my God, especially when you, at the time I was a little bit addicted to my phone. So I was like, I can't take pictures. I can't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't have my Google maps. I'm like, this really blows. Because we live in this world. If you don't post it, it never really happens, right? I used to be like that. I used to be like that. And then, then, 
Then I went off the face of the earth in Bali for several months and, you know, got off of social media, email and everything else. And then I'm like, oh my God, I love being detached. I love like social media detoxing. I, I think if I didn't have a business, I probably would never be on social media. I am just coming back from the social media detox. Actually, I came back last week. So yes, I try to do it regularly, at least once a year, take a week off at least. But um, and sometimes when I travel, especially my husband and I, we say, okay, no phones, no social media. And when we get back, if we want, we'll post things so we could just stay present at the moment and enjoy ourselves. No, I think that's important. What I've done more because it's still as a business, I'm always, if there's some form of social media I typically need to do, but what I'll do is I'll schedule it out like, okay, I'm giving myself this amount of time to do social media and whether it's, you know, 20 minutes or hour or whatever. And then I'm like, no more. The rest of the trip is mine and it is what it is. And if I didn't capture it, I didn't need to be captured because what it, this trip is not for other people, it's for me. So I love when people really focus in on being present in their travel because you miss out on so much. No. So I have a question for you. What is your okay. next <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't expecting a question. Go for it. When is your next retreat? Do you do a retreat? I do. So I also have a business called Rogue Experiences, as well as, you know, the Hello Well with Danielle brand. And I used to, oh my God, rest in peace 2020. 2020 was a bit lit. I had a trip to Bali. I had a trip to Colombia. Oh, this is all that was canceled. So I had a trip to Bali, planned Colombia. Napa. Um, we were going to go somewhere else, Turks and Caicos. I was going to do my first couple's trip to Turks and Caicos. I was going to do a girl's trip to Turks and Caicos. And there was a couple other trips in the end of the year. And that all got washed out. Like, so I haven't done anything. So I was thinking about doing a trip in July for Turks and Caicos for women. It was going to be smaller. But what's going on now and looking at the travel you know, world right now and you know, closing off the Caribbean and Mexico, I'm like, I don't think that anything's going to be happening in July. But I am planning for something for sure in Africa in October. October, beginning of October, I am looking at planning a trip to Morocco. Yes, that's awesome. So you mentioned Bali. My my honeymoon was supposed to be in Bali last year. My wedding was supposed to be in Mexico last year. And yes, everything got pushed back to this year. The wedding is supposed to still happen in August in Mexico. So we, yeah, we just don't make this up to God. <laughs> Yeah, no, it sucks. I mean, Bali, you will get there. I'm manifesting right now. You will get there. And I definitely encourage you to take a Balinese traditional dancing class because those were so much fun. But I love Bali. It's funny. The first time I went to Bali, I hated it. I'm like, I don't know what the hype is about this place. This place is whack. And then I went back and it was, it changed my, it honestly changed my life. So you it literally changed hype, my life. Right? You went before the hype of Bali because, you know, the last couple of years ago it became really popular. You went before that? Yeah, and so I did go in the midst of the hype. Um, but I would say that what people, you know, how would I say this? There still are places you can go in Bali. Like Cedarman is what you know, a boot used to be a lot of people go to a boot and a boot feels like I'm walking down the street and I'm like, is everyone speaking English? I think everyone speaks English here. Not, not that they speak English. I'm sorry. Is everyone um, American or, you know, non Balinese, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, though, uh, don't get it wrong. I still love a boot. Like I love going to yoga bar and I've had so many great experiences in, in, in a boot. However, places like Cedarman, where there is not much to do, but it is one of the most beautiful places. And it's really where after, for me, I had like, you know, six people die on me in one year and I didn't realize I was grieving. And I went there to kind of just self-care myself together and heal. And it, my game plan didn't work because the land and the beauty of everything just kind of took me another path. And I just love being in like smaller places in Bali. And then you get out to other parts of Indonesia. It's a beautiful place. I love 
love that. Yeah, when I travel to, I like being away from the, the main, the touristy area. I like to do vocals. That's where you really get the experience. So I definitely can relate to that for sure. So I'm going to need your recommendations when I go to Bali. Yep, I'm definitely will give you some recommendations. But yeah, no, I definitely will be doing something in October in Morocco. I'm super excited about Morocco. Morocco is going to be fire. And I feel like by October, we'll be able to travel. Um, I've thought about doing something in the state side, like at a cabin somewhere, but I'm like, eh, I don't know. Because even coming to San Francisco, like San Francisco right now in LA, we still have a 10 day quarantine for, you know, non essential incoming flights. So it's like, I don't see people wanting to come out to, you know, somewhere here and, I also don't want to risk people getting sick because that would be the worst thing. And so I've been really cautious. I know other people are planning trips and I rock on for them. But for me, I don't want to plan anything until I feel confident enough to where I can make sure that I've done my best to make sure no one gets sick Mm -hmm. and that it's safe as possible. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a huge responsibility. But I'm excited. Maybe in the summertime... Things will get better. I'm hoping. I'm praying. Girl, I need to get out. <laughs> yeah, and I feel I you. To I get out. Feel you. America, all last year, my last trip was 2019, summer. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I, the only way I can say that I went somewhere in 2020, though I had trips planned, I was going to Seychelles and everything. Um, I was out of the country for New Year's, and so I came back into the country on the second. Of January, so I can say technically in 2020 I was in Costa Rica, but that's about it. Hey, it's better than what I got out of 2020. Yes. So my one last question for you is a huge part of what we're doing here um, is this wellness. What I'm calling this wellness revolution for women of color, and it's really helping women of color get to the point to where they're unrooting, you know, their past traumas, they're unrooting what's been holding them back so they can get to their authentic selves and live the life that they truly desire and to serve. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to your younger self to be a part of this movement and kind of be living your authentic self? I say this all the time. Um, My main advice to my younger self is just share your life, right? You are unique. God placed you on this earth for a reason. There's no, you have no business trying to be like everybody else. You have something that other people need. So don't stop holding yourself back. Stop pleasing everyone, right? And the more you please other people, the more you lose who you are, you lose your identity. And our purpose is rooted in our, our identity. If you don't know who you are, if, unless you discover who you are, you're going to feel very lost in this world. So, yeah. And make sure to dance. And dance. (laughs) Dance, right? (laughs) Dance until you can't dance no more. Thank you so much again for being on the show. And I look forward to having you guys join us this week in our dance challenge. Other than that, I will talk to you guys later. Awesome. See you guys later. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram, and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like Hello 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 Love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening, and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.